Nigeria don't join the rest of the world to mark World Tsunami Awareness Day. House of Reps don't raise alarm, say so make them begin screening against Ebola for borders inside Nigeria. Sickness don't stop the trial of before before Chamo of pension reform tax team Abdul Rashid Mena today. And for sports, on top one corruption allegation, court don't discharge and acquit NFF Presido, Amaju Pinik, and four other people. My country people, Una, good evening, and thank you so you join us on top as it take happen. My name is Na Una Douglas. And for the first story we are carry come for now, sake of one warning from the Nigeria Hydrological Services Agency, NHSA, on top flooding where they happen now, especially as rain down the park in Lode go, Nigerians where they live for rocky area where they cause earthquake and other related disasters, don't they lament, they blame government, say they don't even care sake of the danger within they face uh, as it be. People where they live for Pape, one rocky community inside FCT, been they experience what they call earth tremor, where all the ground just they shake. These people don't they cry when they talk, say, after government come, they tell them sorry, sake of the tremor will be happen for that community. No action for the side of government don't happen to do things where they go do to stop the earthquake. John Emmanuel will be our correspondent, visit Pape to find out how the people take government warning on top of the natural disaster and report come as a world they mark World Tsunami Awareness Day. Today in the World Tsunami Awareness Day, and this tsunami, they happen when earthquake, landslide, and other earth movement where they happen normally for land take place inside water, what we would call ocean. This one will come cause very big flood where they destroy people and properties. Now, since this tsunami, they happen for a time where people don't expect, now this one come make Nigerian Hydrological Services Agency come the one people. So make them be careful with the way we they relate with their environment so that any time where any natural disaster will resemble this tsunami will take place, you know, will affect them badly. Since this tsunami, now things like earthquake and earth tremor, they cause them. Now, people where they stay for areas where rock day, come they ask questions, say, now, where to make government know they take issues relating to this kind of message of tsunami to their side? According to them, they don't experience earthquake and other natural disasters which relate to what in this government they try to talk about flooding and tsunami. But government know they take issues concerning what in they happen for their own environment serious. For example, recently, Pape people experienced earth tremor. That one be say, ground shake, come open mouth, they wait, make it start to consume people. After the Belek Belewe government tell them, government never see go back, go do anything to make sure say next time if the thing happen, it will affect them. This rock has a blast of it has been a long time ago. Crush rock, Cetraco, uh, beggar, and all of that. Maybe one day now, you see that the whole puppy will just collapse, as in drawn and hope and hope it will just just gone like that. So I think that if our government has provide accessible place that people will locate for this place to a better place, to an easy life for people. This puppy is a very big, uh, large uh, uh, place. Okay, if everybody move, where are we going? But it's the government duty to support people to locate them somewhere that is it's okay because this place is around with the pattern of the sun, it's everywhere. All the many of companies here, this is why they, they settle and they're doing their business and they don't even care about the people's life. For this area, people they build house on top and under rock upon say them experience air tremor recently. It did very important make government follow give orientation to these people on how to build house for this area so that future so that future disaster no go happen to them. This now John Emmanuel for Wazubia Max TV. For another story we resemble that one, Director General of the Nigerian Hydrological Survey Services, Engineer Clement Nze. Don't the Jinja federal government say make them demand explanations from Cameroon? Why they no keep the agreement between them and Nigeria before they release plenty water from Lagdo Dam? The plenty water were then released for the 10th of November, now caused a heavy flooding for some parts of Nigeria. When they young for one special interview with Wazobia Max TV correspondent, Philip Mweli, engineer Nze, talk say the releasing of this plenty water by Cameroon they against the agreement and understanding between the two countries. To build that no be to go uh to go buy something. You know. Damn that money. Try to see that the agreement where we sign with Cameroon with regard to river, 
or like the dam, their own dam, where they catch water for them, that we do it as we agree for pepper. That if they go release water, make the tell Nigerians. And when they tell Nigerians and we, our agency, we begin to holler everywhere, they tell community, tell states, that water they come home, make them hear where we make them carry their people, where they those rivers, near the river. Carry them go to place where they up, up, so that nothing will happen to them. Even if they should lose any property, they don't go lose their lives. And as we talk to people too, make them too, they help themselves. Some go say, now here they bury my papa, they bury my mama, now here they bore me, I don't go come out from here. We they tell them, I beg, make them come out from there. Because if water come carry them, their children go, no go even know where they bury them too. Water go carry them and go and throw away. So make them they listen to the thing where we they tell them for radio, for, for newspaper, for television, about flood where they come for Nigeria and they obey. They will be alive. Nothing, they, nothing will destroy them. And then, and the cons, cons suggest say it will make plenty sense to build buffer dams to reduce the damage where heavy flooding they bring. But the talks say that can be big project require plenty money to do. Uh, to build that, not be to go uh, to go buy something. Uh, dam that money. To build that dam for River Benue, buffer dam. Dam where you go hold water, where they come from Cameroon. It not be one day thing to go do them. Nigeria, like any other part of the world, they face some challenges of money to do so many things. So I think Nahim Kosa, that, that's the thing where make him, that today, since 2012, Nigeria never be able to build that buffer dam where you go to catch water, where they come from Cameroon. I think it's the issue of uh, money. Nahim Kosa, if money there, I'm sure government to go build that dam. They wouldn't like to lose life or lose uh, property every year. And that now the Director General Nigeria Hydrological Survey Services, Engineer Clement Nze, when he uh, talk about the way forward for the building of buffer dam, we will bring or solve the problem of all this flooding where they happen for the country. And for the next one, make we enter Senate. Senators on the express confidence say to return the country from January to December budget cycle, he say it day possible. That is, as we both talk, it day achievable as it will help for proper planning and development of the country's economy. The lawmakers were young for separate interviews with our correspondent, Fidel Osehale, explain say the budget defense by ministries, departments, and agencies don't conclude. Then say what remain now, now make all the standing committees harmonize their figures with the appropriation committee of the two chambers of the National Assembly before they go learn for plenary. All of them, they don't defend their budget on 29. We don't close defense. If you see any agency now, now just maybe one clarification or the other. And as we they talk, even this morning, appropriation committee would collect a report from committee. Yesterday, we will not leave until around six. So I did appropriation committee. Uh, appropriation committee, they work. And today, nine fifth, now appropriation committee will finish reporting, receiving report from all the committees. Then they will begin their own work so that in the next one, two weeks, maximum, we will finish everything, bring them back, make our people look at them. Uh, we don't suspend plenary for three weeks now, uh, so that we will get enough time, make we talk to all the agencies. And as of today, uh, will be Tuesday, uh, f uh, the fifth day of uh, November, uh, we don't s talk to almost all the agencies. And we will resume plenary today, we will do the rest, what we are supposed to do, uh, inside our chamber and inside our offices, but we don't talk to all the agencies. If you get any question for any agency, we go invite the agency, may you come back, come and explain further. But by the grace of God, we go pass this budget for December. You know, some MDAs sometimes and they hide under this uh, uh, conflicting budget cycle, and sometimes people do not get the money that they want. So when there's January to December cycle, the whole thing will clear. And the hope is that everybody will get their money as and when due. It's good for planning purposes. Government, business entities will be able to forecast their opportunities and risk and uh, find ways of mitigating those risks. So uh, if you do not have a stable budget circle that will allow for more proper predictions, that will not be good for the government, it will not be good for the economy, it will not be good for everybody. So the good thing is, 
Now, when we begin from January to December, every business has the opportunity to begin to calculate its opportunities, calculate the risk and ways of mitigating those risks. So it's, it's very, very important. And we feel in order to help the government to plan very well, in order to help our business entities and any other en entity in the country to plan very well, we need to get on uh, with the uh, January December budget circle. And as it take happen today, Senate don't confirm Justice John Soho and a colleague will be Justice Benedict Kanyip as Chief Judge of the Federal High Court and President of the National Industrial Court for the level. Then confirm the two both of them after the Chamo Senate Committee on Top Judiciary, Okweyemi Bamidele presenting report for the floor on Tuesday for plenary. It talks say their confirmation satisfy what the Nigerian constitution wants, just as it adds say they possess the qualification and experience to do their work. Our recommendation, Mr. President, is that the Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, having screened the nominee and being satisfied about his exposure, experience, performance, qualifications and competence, hereby recommend that the Senate do confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice J.T. Soho for appointment as the Honorable Chief Judge of the Federal High Court. The Senate Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters, having screened the nominee and being satisfied by his exposure, experience, performance, qualifications and competence, hereby recommend that the Senate do confirm the nomination of Honorable Justice Benedict Bakwap Kanye for appointment as the Honorable President of the National Industrial Court of Nigeria. When the young on top of this confirmation, Senate President Ahmed Lawan can express hope say the appointment for this capacity will improve the judicial system. Nomination of Honorable Justice John Temba Soho for appointment as the Honorable Chief Judge of the Federal High Court, those in favor of say aye, those against say nay, the ayes have it. The confirmation of uh, Honorable Justice John Temba Soho is hereby approved. The nomination of Honorable Justice Benedict Bakwap Kanyip for appointment as the Honorable President of the National Industrial Court is hereby confirmed. And later on top of the matter, the Senate can later approve the nomination of former Deputy Governor of Edo State, Pius Odubu, as Chamo and 14 other people as members of the board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, where every every know as NDDC. Senate also for Tuesday approved the nomination of Bernard Okumagba, Managing, Managing Director, Otobong Edem, Executive Director Projects, and Maxwell Oko. Executive Director of Finance as members of the board for NDDC. But the nomination of Dr. Joy Nunye as member of the NDDC board representing River State gets more K-leg as she knows skate through because according by Senate, she failed to honor one invitation where the committee been invited. The confirmation followed the presentation and consideration of the report of the committee on top Niger Delta where we say now Senator Peter Mwaboshi Hedam. The committee considers nominees qualified to serve on the governing board of the Niger Theatre Development Commission and recommended the following nominees for the confirmation of the Senate. One, Dr. Pius Udubu as chairman of the governing board of the Niger Theatre Development Commission. Two, Mr. Bernard O. Okumagba as Managing Director of Niger Delta Development Commission. Three, Engineer Odbong Endem, as Executive Director of Projects of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Four, Maxwell Oko, as Executive Director, Finance Administration of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Five, Prophet Jones Irue, as Member representing Delta State on the Governing Board of Niger Delta Development Commission. Other members with the committee confirm now Prophet Erwe, Delta, Victor Egato, Edo, Nkechi, Nwago, Abia, Theodore Allison, Bayelsa, Victor Antai, Akwaibom, and Maurice Efiwat, Cross River. The other five members now Olubenga, Edema, Ondo, 
Uchegbu Kirian, Imo, Aisha Morit Moritala Mohammed, Northwest representative from Kano, Shuaibu Zubeiru, Northwest representative from Adamawa, and Abdullahi Bage, North Central representative from Nasarawa State. Still on to National Assembly matter, House of Representatives on call the Ministry of Health, say make them send the necessary material and professionals to carry out a bola screening for both land and sea border inside the country. Then take the decision inside the House after Honorable Pascal Obi move one motion on top what the country need to do to prevent another Ebola problem for Nigeria. Obi will express worry talk say, DR Congo as country where they suffer from Ebola now, no far from Nigeria. And if they no put things in place to prevent another Ebola, the damage where the disease go cause no be here. The House also tell Obonge government say, make them set aside money where they go use prevent Mr. Ebola from coming to Nigeria again. And for the next story, the case of the before before Chiamo of former pension reform tax team, Abdul Rashid Mena, was supposed to happen today inside the Federal High Court, Abuja, no can happen, sake of say, in nowhere. For the resumed hearing on Tuesday, one officer of the Nigerian Correctional Service, Dr. Idowu Ajayi, been present one later to the judge, Justice Okonabank, will get to do with how embodied the disturbance. The prosecution counsel can react, say they know they are aware of the letter at all. After much argument for the pending application, the judge can rule say the matter go resume for November 7, 7 will be the next will be next tomorrow. And for the next story, we no sweet belly at all. Fire don't catch one shopping complex from Martin Street for Lagos Island area of Lagos State. According by the report, men of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency and Lagos State Fire Service been go there to quench the fire. Many people where they sell been they struggle, they run from pillar to post to save some of their goods from the building. As at the time where they send the, uh, this story, they never know what it caused the fire and the level of damage where the fire caused. Talk talk person for Lasema and, and the fire service Nosa Okubo and Adeleke Ashimi now then confirm the incident. But as it be, Ashimi talks say another complex for Dosumu Street, about 500 meters from Martin Street, been also day on fire. My people, una still day on top as it take happen for Wazobia Max TV. We they come back with business news. <music> And on top business, Rice Farmers Association of Nigeria, Kano Chapter Talks say, the partial closure of border don't boost local rice production, that is, it don't improve rice production, can't even boost market for them inside the state. The state chamo, Abubakar Haruna Aliu, now he this one on Tuesday when he talk with our correspondent inside the Secretariat of the Association for Kano. According by him, then they sell one bag of rice to people where they process them between 9,000 to 9,500 naira against the initial price of 8,500 naira. Just as it talks, say, the price increment now due to the high rate of demand. It adds, say, 50 kg of the local rice after processing, then they sell them 15,000 naira depending on the quality of the rice. When it reacts sake of the complaint of customers, says stone too plenty for the local rice. The chamo explains, say, the farmers don't get any blame on top of this one. Instead, now people will package them after the normal processing. I um, this rice uh, with stones, particles in it. Actually, he didn't do a very good job because we are way ahead of that. A uh, couple of years ago, oh, uh, there are some intervention from NGOs that they come in and they train our people how to process their beer rice without stones and, uh, and uh, particles in it. And uh, if you look at it now, uh, our rice, real meal rice, is comparable to any other rice in the world because if we bring the processed rice here, you cannot differentiate whether it is a foreign rice or the local rice. This actually has increased uh, due to the border closure, but uh, initially the price is 
it varies, you know. Uh, but for now, it has increased. And uh, now you can get that bag of rice for 50 kg for about 15,000 naira here in Kado. And depending on the quality of the rice and what variety, uh, and the variety too. So it has to do with the it has to do with the prices and it has to do with the quality of the rice. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buaridon approved the appointment of Dr. Mrs. Sarah Alade as special advisor to the president on top finance and economy. When did they announce this one today? It will be Tuesday. For one statement, senior special assistant to the president on top media and publicity, Garba Shehu, Talks say Dr. Mrs. Alade's office go now day inside the Ministry of Finance, Budget, and National Planning. Dr. Alade will hold Bachelor of Science, Economics, and PhD for Management Science Operations Research, being retired from the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, as Deputy Governor for 2017, after she done spent 23 years for CBN. For 2014, she been occupied one Obonge position as Acting CBN Governor for short time. My people, the Torino go complete without sports. Will they come back? <music> and on top sports level, Federal High Court where they sit inside Abuja don't strike out the corruption allegation with a level against Presido of the Nigerian Football Federation and Maju Pinnick and four other people. The NFF Presido and the first Vice Presido, Barista Sheyi Akinwumi, plus including Vice President Shehu Diku, the General Secretary Dr. Mohamed Sanusi, and one Executive Board Member, Ahmed Yusuf. The accused and say they mismanaged $8.4 million and $4 billion naira. The NFF execu executives then charged them for 16 counts of corruption and mismanagement of the amount from the 2014 FIFA grant. They also accuse them of conflict of interest and the one will be say they no declare their assets by the former special presidential investigation panel will be say na Okun Obonobla been head down. The special presidential investigation panel be no proof the allegation. But for the resume hearing on Tuesday, Justice Ijoma Ojuku of the Federal High Court inside Abuja can't discharge and acquit Amaju Pinnick and other NFF officials were then accused for the matter. My people, now so it take happen. But before we go, make we summer honor all those things will form our major story. Nigeria don't join the rest of the world to mark World Tsunami Awareness Day. House of Reps don't raise alarm, say make them begin screening against Ebola for borders inside the country. And sickness don't stop the trial of before before Chamo of pension reform tax team Abdul Rashid Mena today. And for sports, on top one corruption allegation, court don't discharge and acquit NFF Presido and Maju Pinnick and four other people. And the size of our bulletin be that as it take happen. Thank you, say they part of the program. From all of us here, we say good night. And my name, Na Douglas. <laughs>